Hi, I'm Manu Kiyachi. I'd like to spend some time explaining how I construct grooves based around the symbols. And this is my regular setup. OK, this is a, a splash 8 inches. This is a, a splash 6 inches. Hi-hats are 13 inches cases. This is a 16 inches A custom crash. This was in a splash A 6 inches. And that one is an 18 inches A custom crash as well. This one is a 20 inches A custom ride. And this one is a 10 inches EFX. So I wish to explain to you exactly why do I use this setup of symbols and especially splashes, because I, I'm using them very, very often and I like them. So I got to use splashes because it leaves the liberty, I mean, for me, to play around a bit more than just using crashes and having a long sound holding for a while, and then I can't hear what I'm doing afterwards. So it's great using splashes for that purpose. And it's a little bit in my imagination like using colors on the whole picture, like green, blue, or yellow. When I hit splashes, it reminds me in my imagination a little bit of colors. That's Manu's cymbal setup. For this video, Manu has selected a track taken from his first solo album entitled It's About Time, and the track is called Silence, which was recorded here at Real World Studios. Manuk will approach the last section of this song in three different ways. His first approach is what could typically be described as a classic style, with the emphasis on the groove being played between the bass drum, the hi-hat, the snare drum and the ride cymbal. However, notice at all times Manuk maintains a very strong eighth note pulse on the hi-hat. This ensures good time throughout the whole section. On this second approach, notice how Manu is more expansive with his use of the drum kit. A point to notice is how that he emphasises the beat on the crash cymbals, whilst playing accents between the splashes and the toms. Listen also for how Manu produces two distinct musical tones just from the ride cymbal, by playing between the bell and the taper of the cymbal.
this third version of silence, notice how Manu incorporates the whole of his drum set to create a full sound. Notice also how he shifts the beat around, adding colour and excitement to the section. However, he still maintains a strong eighth note pulse on the hi-hats, allowing him the freedom to be expressive in his playing, but still aware of where the beat is at all times. Before we continue with the video, there's just a few things I would like to say about care of cymbals. It's very important, particularly with crash cymbals, that the cymbals are not clamped at the top. They should be allowed to float freely, and there should always be a nylon sleeve between the cymbal and the cymbal holder. With any of the world's leading players, you will notice that they usually have the cymbals angled slightly towards them. This is for two reasons. One, it makes it very easy for them to reach them, and secondly, it allows them to play the cymbal with the correct stroke. Never clamp a crash cymbal, never hit a crash cymbal full on, always slice the cymbal. Listen to what Manu has to say about this point. I like to be a little bit more specific with one point concerning the cymbals. Maybe you noticed it, but my cymbals are floating freely for you know, all of them, and it's a little bit the same, similar thing for the kit that I didn't put any gaffer tape on each head, so it means like the kit and the cymbals are like breathing, and you're able to capture more of the acoustic sound, and if you, you know, like clamp them, you're going to ch choke the cymbals and of course sometimes damage them. I hope you enjoyed all of this, and for this final track, I'm going to play on an instrumental piece, which is one of mine, and I decided to change the cymbals some of the symbols, which this one is a rock ride, 21 inches A, and this one is a 17 inches K China boy. And I decided to change the symbols because I wanted to have, as I did before, you know, different colors in this track. So by those two, the sound's going to be very different. <laughs> 